When we drive the rover on Mars, we drive in two kind of fundamental ways. The first way we call blind driving. And we, we just kind of ask the rover, cover its eyes, you know, drive forward a meter, turn right 10 degrees, drive forward another meter. But that takes humans to evaluate the terrain. And they have to, to know where it's safe to drive and where it's not safe to drive. But if we want to truly go someplace that we have never seen before, we have to use autonomous rover navigation. And when we use this, uh, short for, uh, we call it AutoNav for short, um, there's four main steps that we use, all of which Shaky used before. The first thing we have to do is we have to perceive the environment. Um, we use stereo vision for this particular rover, but lots of people use different modalities of LiDAR, uh, whatever. Uh, we do a traversability analysis where we assess the terrain and understand where it's safe to drive and where it's not. We do path selection where we choose the most efficient path to get to the goal where we want to get to. And then we execute that drive. Um, and we'll start with the first one, which is the stereo vision. Whenever I talk to to kids, I tell them to do this experiment where you, you put out your finger and you blink with your right eye and your left eye, and you can see that your finger moves. It's because we're seeing um, this point in space differently in our left and our right eyes. And our rover has two cameras. It has a left camera and a right camera. And we use this disparity between where this object is and our two eyes to figure out where it is in three-dimensional space. And your brain is doing that all the time, just automatically. That's what it's doing. And our rover does the same thing. It scans through the images, and it finds features of interest. And it says it's in this image, or this location of my left eye, and this location of my right eye. And then it calculates the disparity between those two images to know where that point is. And it calculates it in three-dimensional space. And we do that over the entire terrain in front of us. And we can make a dense mesh of all these points around us. And we can then have a representation of the geometry of the terrain in front of us. And now we can do an evaluation of that geometry. And we can basically break the terrain up into a grid. And then we can assign what we call a goodness for every grid cell. And we can say, well, is this a safe place for the rover to drive? Is it too tilted? Is it too rough? And we use three different metrics when we look at this. We look at obstacles that the rover might encounter. Uh, so this is illustrating the obstacles. We don't want anything that will high center the rover. That's bad. Um, high slopes, we evaluate the slope. And then we evaluate the overall roughness. And then we look at those metrics and we combine them and we densely populate wherever we can see. You can see there's some shadows behind this rock. We can't see everywhere. We can't see that far out in front of us. But we evaluate the areas that we can see. And then we can plan our path. And what we do for our algorithm is we use a discrete number of paths. And then we can evaluate both the safety of that path. And then we can evaluate how efficiently it gets to the goal where we want it to go. And we can say, OK, this sharp arc off to the left, it might be safe, but it doesn't get us to where we really want to go. The one that goes directly to our goal, that goes over an obstacle that has too low of a goodness score. And then it picks the optimal path to achieve what we want to achieve. But then we only drive a short distance. We drive 50 centimeters sometimes, 2 meters other times, depending upon how rough the terrain is. And then we redo that whole process over again. We re-image, we re-evaluate, we build the, the dense train map, we then re-evaluate its goodness, and then we can plan a new path. And we just sequentially, over and over, uh, plan out where we're going to go with these four steps. And then that enables us to drive to places that no human has ever seen before, which I think is a pretty amazing task that comes directly from the work of the people who built Shaky.